So the question is, who is Roger Parker? Uh, that's a, it's, um, some English poet said, it's easy to ask the hard question, you know, so who am I? Um, how would I define myself? I define myself as a musicologist, uh, primarily, and also as a musician. Uh, I worked uh, for a long time at Cornell in upstate New York, and then I moved to Oxford in England, and then I moved to Cambridge in England, and then I moved to King's College London. I retired uh, a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, I guess that's the short answer to who I am. Who does Roger Parker look like? Um, yeah, or what does he look like? Um, I guess he looks like, uh, the kind of, I've always looked the age uh, I am. So I, I guess I look about the age I am. Um, I look uh, perhaps a little bit unconventional for uh, a musicologist. I don't wear, uh, last time I wore a tie was in about 1965. Uh, I don't want to look like a banker. Um, so I look scruffy, I think most of the time by at least by business standards. Who does Roger Parker admire? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there are people I admire who I know personally, and I have some very close friends uh, in uh, who work on the same thing as I do, who are musicians music editors um i wrote a um i wrote a book uh, on opera a couple of um uh, well about 10 years ago now with a, a woman called carolyn abate who teaches at um harvard and uh, she's one of my closest friends but she's also someone i admire um and there are many other people like that in the profession <clears throat> uh who do i admire who i don't know um, you know, then we're getting on to uh, not many politicians, I have to say, maybe some sports people. Uh, I don't know, my mind's gone blank there. Some some soccer players. I watch soccer quite a bit and I admire um, Jack Grealish. There we are. There's someone. Who is Roger Parker married to? Um, uh, he's married to a, a cellist, a concert cellist called Lyndon Cranham. And uh, they've been married for an indecent amount of time. I, uh, I first met her when, uh, when I was 16 and she was 18 and we got married a few years later. So um, yeah, I'm married to a... Uh, another musician, which is enormously important, I think, in all sorts of ways. We have very similar interests, although she's a performer and I'm a scholar. Where is Roger Parker from? He's from England and he's from London. Uh, he's always lived within an hour's travel of London. So London's the central, uh, uh, place in his life he was born obviously born in london in uh in a street uh called doughty street which uh, was where charles dickens lived for a time in the east end so i'm from london where did roger parker study music i studied music first of all um this is a kind of circular thing. I studied music, first of all, at Goldsmiths College in the University of London. And then I moved to do my PhD at King's College, London. And then I started all my migrations over the globe and in the end came back to King's College, London. So King's College, London was the central place in my education. Where did Roger Parker meet Lyndon Cranham? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I met her. This this sounds really nerdy, actually. Um, I think I met her for the first time 
uh, at a performance of Wagner's De Meister Singer at Cotton Garden. How about that? You know, you've got to do something in six hours. And I remember we were sitting in the cheapest seats at the top of the house and she was wearing these sort of fancy boots and she put them between the railings uh, where these cheap seats were and, and got her foot stuck in the railings. So that's where I met her. I met her at uh, Covent Garden in London. Where does Roger Parker live right now? I live uh, in a place called Havant on the south coast of England, which um, very few people have heard of, but it's between Portsmouth and Chichester, which are two fairly famous uh, places. Um, so that's where, that's where I live right now. And I've been living here for um, more than 20 years now, longest I've ever lived anywhere. I don't think so. I mean, I used to, I used to, the, the, one of the formative influences in my life was really moving to Cornell, moving to upstate New York. Before that, I, I did have a kind of alternative non-scholarly accent, which I guess I picked up at school. But then I went to America and I lived there for 12 years and my accent just got messed up at that time. And now very often people th people who are experts in accents think i'm australian which is crazy because i don't think i sound anything like australia but um yeah i have a, 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 a an unusual accent now which is difficult to place yeah does roger parker sing opera um yeah um, I actually wrote an article about that once, about um, a, 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 an aria which got stuck in my mind and I kept singing it and playing it at the piano. Uh, I certainly don't sing opera for anyone else's pleasure apart from my own. But yeah, I do, I do sing. I have, like many musicians, I have a constant soundtrack of music going on in my head. Does Roger Parker play an instrument? Um, I used to um, I used to play the trombone uh, quite a bit, and I used to play the euphonium, but I, I dropped those. And um, uh, the piano is my main instrument, but uh, I have a kind of a, a problem with my fingers. It's called Dupuis Dupuis Tras, where the fingers bend over. So for the last like five or ten years five years I haven't been able to play the piano and that's one of the sad things in my life I guess before that I probably played the piano for an hour or two hours every day and now I can't play anymore does Roger like uh, Parker like Marmite I ate Marmite does Roger Parker like Marmite he ate Marmite for breakfast this morning yeah, I do. It's uh, it's one of the great um, dividing things in the human race, isn't it? Whether you like Marmite or not, the answer to in my case is yes. Does Roger Parker speak Italian? Yes, I do. Um, I have spoken Italian maybe for the last. Uh, I I learnt it. I was. I was in hospital for three months when I was about 25. I had a really bad motorbike accident and um, I decided I got to do something in there. So I learned Italian. That's when I first started doing it. And um, I, I guess it's got better over the years because I have more and more to do with the language. I actually taught a, taught a, a master's course in Florence um, a couple of years ago. So my Italian's good enough now that I can teach in it. Yeah. Does Roger Parker watch Countdown? No, no idea. I don't even know what it is. Is it a quiz show or something? Don't know. Does Roger Parker have kids? Yeah, um, he has uh, three kids and um, the oldest one, I mean, they're now all in their 40s and 
the oldest one uh, is called Matthew, and he was incredibly rebellious when he was young, impossible to deal with. And now, as I remind him very frequently, he's ended up being an academic, so doing exactly what his father does for a living. So he's a professor of um, uh, science, um, psychology, animal psychology. My daughter, she's in the middle and she's called Emma and she's a professional violinist. She's in a wonderful string, called, string quartet uh, called the Albion String Quartet. And my youngest son, Tom, is also a musician and he teaches piano and cello for a living. Ah, milk in first. Does Roger Parker pour milk or tea first? Well, tell you the truth, I don't drink tea very much. Um, I drink coffee and it's always black coffee. Now, if I had to do something first, I would put the tea in first and the milk in afterwards, which doubtless shows my working class origins. Does Roger Parker listen to music other than opera? I uh, yeah, he does. Um, in fact, I probably listen to more other kinds of music than I do opera, um, because opera. I, I listen to a lot of music in the car when I'm driving around, and opera doesn't work too much. The dynamic balance is 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 too great. I often listen to chamber music. I listen to a lot of chamber music. Um, I don't listen to much that's not classical music. Uh, I used to used to listen to a whole lot of um, Bob Dylan and all sorts of folk music and stuff like that. But no longer. It's just life short, and I just listen to classical music, mostly nineteenth century or eighteenth century. Is Roger Parker famous? Uh, he is uh, well known. Uh, most musicologists would have heard of me, I think. And actually, um, these days, I do quite a lot of opera reviewing uh, in magazines. I write for newspapers. I write a lot of program notes. I appear on the uh, BBC Radio quite a lot, so I'm probably, um, for a musicologist, I'm better known than most. Famous? No. I think the definition of famous is where more people know you than you know people, and that's definitely not the case. Um, no, is Roger Parker a lord? No, I'm not part of the aristocracy. Um, I come from fairly humble uh, background. My mother was uh, um, a pharmacist and my father was um, a sort of traveling salesman, really. Yeah, lower middle class. Is Roger Parker related to Verdi? Um, yeah, um, in in all sorts of ways. Um, I have a, he's the person I've probably spent most of my life thinking about. The interesting psychological thing about this is, I I don't think Verdi was a very nice person. I think he was a rather, I think he was a wonderful opera composer, but I think he was a rather unpleasant human being and often those two things go together um, they often say about the 19th century that um you can you can tell whether someone was a pleasant person or not with how they dealt with their servants uh if they had servants he was horrible to his servants he was a he was an insecure man who as he gained power um uh used that power to um sort of play off his insecurity so i'm i'm related to him in the in the in the broadest sense of the word um but i don't admire him very much as a person
What is Roger Parker's biggest academic achievement? Uh, that's a difficult one. I mean, it depends, I guess, whether you you think of this in terms of professional positions or you think of it in terms of, 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 of things that you've produced. In terms of professional um, achievement, uh, I, um, you know, I was I was professor of I was the professor of music at Cambridge for a time, which in this country will be thought of as some kind of you know pillar of achievement. Um, but actually, I don't look back on that time as a particularly happy one. Um, uh, what's my biggest academic achievement? To um, I don't know. I would uh, I would say in some ways that I think if there's one thing I've done through my life, it's made Italian opera, 19th century Italian opera, a bit more academically respectable, um, a little more acceptable as something uh, that one does. What is Roger Parker working on at the moment? Um, well, I do endless um, editions of opera. One of the things that I like, as well as writing about opera, what I do is, is do editions of opera. And I'm quite involved in operatic performance a lot of the time. So one of the things I'm doing is, is working on, uh, well, two or three editions of Donizetti operas uh, at the moment. But the other thing I'm doing is, and it's it's relevant to my time at Chicago, I'm writing a book on music in London. There was a certain moment when I decided that I, I didn't want, I wanted to withdraw from working on Italian opera a bit because I felt I, I, I was just in a defensive position with everything. So I wanted to do something new. And I, I got a, a, a grant which allowed me to spend five years working on music in London in the 19th century um and i'm still writing that book i'm still working on 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 a book about music in in the 1830s in london yeah what is roger parker's favorite opera a lot of people ask that and um, my usual sort of glib answer is the last one i listened to you know i mean how could you possibly say what your favorite opera is? Um, I think the curious the curious thing about this is that there are some operas which I love um, really deeply, but I don't really want to hear again because I know them. I I, I know them. I have them in my head completely. I you know I could recite them from beginning to end, and then you don't really want to hear it again. So there is something about your favorite opera is the one that you most want to listen to next. And they're not the ones that I've, you know, I mean, if I wanted to give a, a I think my favorite opera is probably Verdi's Don Carlos, but it might be The Ring by Wagner, because it's longer. What's Roger Parker's best book or paper? Um, well, in all sorts of ways, the book that I most admire that I've written, and indeed it's the only book that I I read, I reread now that it's been published, is the book that I wrote with Carolina Barte, this book, which is called A History of Opera. And the reason for that is because it's um it's not just my book, it's it's her book as well. And so it's it's in, in this curious kind of composite voice emerged out of it. So whether this is the best or not, I, I don't know, but it's the one I like the best. So that will serve as an answer. Why did Roger Parker get into musicology? Um, because I don't think, why did I get into musicology? Because I don't think I was any good at anything else or would have been any good at anything else. I mean, musicology, you know, does require a, a strange sort of combination of skills because I, I think you 
you have to be interested in music, which doesn't necessarily mean just loving music. You have to be interested in it. You have to be a writer. Um, you have to have musical sensibilities. Um, I, I think it was really the only thing possible for me. I never really thought of anything else. So I was just, I just moved towards it. Why is Roger Parker coming to the University of Chicago? Um, I think um, uh, I, I'm, I'm really keen to teach this graduate course again, because it's something that I'm still thinking about academically. It's still something that's alive in my mind. But I guess the reason, the main reason I'm coming to the University of Chicago is because of personal friendships. I have close personal friendships with well with a couple of people in the in the music department Martha Feldman in, I've known for many many years but also I have two very close friends in the English department one is uh, Josephine McDonough who is a professor of, of English at Chicago but used to work at King's and she and I worked together and the other person is Jim Chandler who again I've known for a very long time in the English department um, and so it is interesting in this way, why, why do you end up doing what you do in musicology? And very often it comes down to personal friendships. The reason I'm coming to Chicago primarily is to, you know, renew myself intellectually, but also because there are close friends there. Why should non-musicologists come to see Roger Parker's lectures? Um, yeah, that's an interesting one. I don't talk about technical features of music very much. I used to a great deal in an earlier life, but actually I think the kind of musicology I do now um, doesn't has very little technical um, difficulty. And in that sense, I think can talk really quite interestingly to non-musicologists. I would hope that one of the things I could do for people who are non-musicologists is explain to them something more about how complex musical meaning is. I mean, musical meaning is, is a very difficult thing for most people to think about. And even for musicologists, they often think about it in very technical ways. And I think thinking about what music means or what music meant to historical subjects is something which I can do because of my upbringing. Um, and I can do it, I think. And indeed, I've spent a lot of time talking to people in academic terms outside musicology. So I think a non-musicologist will learn something from my lectures about the complexity of musical meaning. 